Hi, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, what I'm going to be doing is processing my image of the Flaming Star Nebula in PixInsight and showing you my workflow. So we'll be going from uh, this, this image to this image, or something as close as it is possible, seeing as um, I, that was a test, uh, test run from before. So uh, what we do first is open up the uh, stacked files. So these files are all stacked in uh, Deep Sky Stacker, and it's about uh, yeah three hours and thirty five minutes of exposure time. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is um, yep, there's no no color. You can just about see some stars, and that's it. So what you would do is hit the auto stretch button. If you don't have this button, you can uh, find it by right clicking on the toolbar area and selecting uh, screen transfer functions. So I'm going to hit the nuclear button and the first thing you'll see is this image is very green. It's definitely not what you're expecting. Um, so we will need to use uh, one of the background extractors to, uh, to sort of start removing um, that, that green uh, part of the image. Um, but before we do that, what I'm going to do is just do a dynamic crop on the image itself. Uh, the reason for this is this image during image capture uh, I was using dithering where it basically sort of moves the image that it's taking a, or moves where the telescope is pointing to uh, for the target and moves it slightly to avoid things like walking noise um, but that means that you get uh, an artifact around the edge of the frame whereby um, you don't have a complete stack of images for that edge part of the frame so there's enough room in this that I can just um, crop out a little bit there. So hit the tick once we've um, done the crop to actually complete that crop. And now we've got two options here, dynamic background extraction or automatic background extraction. Um, you could do this and you can um, follow through this, this process in terms of generating the samples, kind of first setting the sample size to 20. Um, hit generate and then you'll get a number of samples here. This is very good when you've got a particularly complex um, target with areas where you want to um, protect the nebula regions and areas where you want to focus on the background. Um, but what I tend to do is first try an automatic background extraction because I think it works quite well. Um, and also I'm partly lazy as well. So um, I, you can either go with the default box size of 5, I find 8 works um, quite well as well so I'm going to try with that um, and then the target image correction uh, will be a subtraction um, that's a typical type of correction that you would do for this very first um, background extraction I think things like division are, are used I think when you're, you're dealing with sort of flats and things like that um, we won't need to use normalize, we're going to discard the background model because we're not going to do anything with it. It's interesting to keep that and look and see what the tool is doing, but other than that I don't find it useful. And I'm just going to replace the target image. Um, drag the triangle onto the image itself to perform that action. So the other reason why you might want to use automatic background extractor as well is if you are doing a dynamic background extraction, you can do this first, see where the nebula areas are and then you can then make sure that you place the dynamic background extraction markers on the image to make sure that you're, you're correctly targeting the background area. You'll notice here that um, yep, it's, it's done the extraction and the image just looks a mess again. So just do the um, auto stretch again, click on that and then you get the image and things are looking a lot closer to probably what you would expect. The next um, step will be, and you can see the, all of these icons that I've got down here, I've created these from a point of convenience, um, saves me going up into the menu um, and hunting for these each time. This is also pretty much a workflow of what I would go through from start to finish. Um, so each time you create um, one of these you can then um, actually sort of drag the triangle, create a new process and then that can be um, stored over here on the, on the right hand side. So um, 
yet we're not doing channel combination because it's a, a, a one trick color image um, next thing we will do is uh, background neutralization so I just come in here select the um, the whole image itself click OK and drag the triangle on um, kind of do this because I've been told to do it but I, I very rarely see any actual difference in doing this um, so take that with a pinch of salt really in terms of whether it's useful to you or not <coughs> so the, the next step definitely will have an impact and is, is quite a key step and that's basically forming colour calibration on this image as well it's not quite the right colours, you've got sort of almost, um, you've got some green tones in here, some odd blue colours and things, so you definitely need to do colour calibration. The way that um, I do this is fairly straightforward, so I pick a star, um, do Option and N, or um, that would be Alt and N on a Windows machine, and select a bright star or a collection of bright stars as the white reference point. Um, select that there, click Preview 1, and that's that now we need a, a good background reference so I look on the image and try and find an area where there's a good level of dark um, sort of background within the image that I can use as that background reference I think on the top right hand corner it happens to be on this image that there is an area where I think around about here looks like it could work quite well so we just do option N again to create another preview area and then we can select that preview from uh, this drop down list, click OK, and that's this done. So then drag the triangle on there to actually run the process on this particular image. I could use the square as well um, because there's only one image, but um, yeah, just, just get used to dragging the triangle onto the images so that you know you're acting this process on this image. So that's looking a lot better now. Quite like the look of that. I'm going to get rid of these previews now because I don't need them. Um, is purely just for that uh, stage. So right click on the preview to delete them. Um, it's always a good thing to um, make sure that you save these images throughout your workflow just in case you want to go back to them. I won't be doing that for this demonstration just to keep this as sharp and short as possible. Uh, the next aspect will be to um, try and remove any unnecessary green within the image. It's usually quite difficult to see whether it is particularly green, uh, just kind of zoom in there a bit to see. Um, but you can do that using the SCNR process. So you open this up, and you can see color to remove green. Um, you can choose your percentage as well. Um, again, this this kind of comes down to what you need to do. Sometimes removing 100% of it actually doesn't quite work properly, so it can be good to um, reduce that amount and play about with it. I'm going to go around 75% with this because I know that works. So uh, just drag the triangle onto the image and that will uh, remove the green tinge to this particular image. So we're now at the stage whereby um, we need to turn it from a linear to a non-linear image. Um, you can do that using the histogram transformation and the screen transfer function. But actually what I'm going to be doing is... Um, using a script from the Easy Processing Suite uh, that's a free download um, that can be added to PixInsight. So select um, Easy Soft Stretch and actually what I'm going to do with this image is is take the, the defaults and know that it works quite well and it is actually a soft stretch. You can play around with these to kind of get a bit more of a um, an aggressive stretch to it but actually I've, I've kind of learned to love not to try and stretch things too much um, and I like the the more of a natural process or natural feel to the image so um, I think if you hit the nuclear here you can it will it kind of brightens it up so it's definitely not as, as stretched as the nuclear option um, it's always good to avoid nuclear things really isn't it so uh, the, the next stage here, you've got a number of, it's a decision point of this, and it depends on the image that you're working with. Um, for this particular image, there's a lot of stars here, um, and actually what I want to do is focus on the, the sort of nebula part of the photo. Um, so the, the flaming star, and also the tadpole nebula. What I'm going to do now is um, run a tool um, 
called Star Exterminator. Um, this is a, a paid for tool that um, ultimately I have to pay for because um, the free one that comes with PixInsight doesn't work on an M1 Mac um, due to the, the architecture and the fact it's using a, an ARM based processor. Um, so came across this, a number of people have been reviewing this tool as well, worked really really well um, and I'm definitely happy to pay for it because it, it does a really good job. Very simple to use, um, just select generate star image because that's what we want to do, we want to extract the stars, create a separate star image um, and then because I've already stretched this um, it is a non-linear image so I won't check this. You can do this process before um, stretching, creating the final stretched image. Sometimes that workflow works better than this, but I know in this instance it works better for me, so I'm not going to do that. So that will be another one of those decision points where you'll try one way, see if it works. If it doesn't, then try the other way. Uh, so just drag the triangle onto the onto the image and wait for it to do its work. Um, it can take quite a while to um, to do this activity and um, yeah, I think there's there's varying speeds. I think people have done performance calculations or comparisons between this and the um, the the one out of the box, the Starnet Plus Plus, I think it's called. Um, and this apparently works a little bit faster, but I'm not too sure. You can sort of performance boost the other one as well using GPU um, processing instead of CPU. Which um, yeah, why why wouldn't you if you can do that? So we have um, we have the nebula image now. And we've got a separate star field image. Uh, so we've got these two things separated, and we can now begin to work with just this. And the benefits of doing this is fundamentally that when you start um, applying sort of curves adjustments to things like this, you're only working on the nebula, and you're not impacting the stars. So the stars stay the same size, and that's that's basically what you want. You don't want over bloated stars. Um, and this is also how people produce like starless images as well if you're if you're into that sort of thing. So what we want to do now, um, the thing immediately after completing the stretch is actually do some noise reduction. So I have a, a couple of um, processes over the right hand side, uh, basically saved again, illuminance noise reduction, and you can kind of copy these uh, values, basically create a four layer. Uh, multi-scale linear transform and update the values in the noise reduction section for each one of those four layers. You've got luminance as a target selected at the bottom um, and that creates that and then you can save it and just apply it. So uh, drag the triangle onto, uh, onto the image to apply uh, some luminance noise reduction and then also um, do the same with chrom chrominance as well. Uh, so you've just got it's seven layers and then you've got the um, four actual values here. So this information was taken from uh, Mitch's um, PixInsight for Beginners um, tutorial as well. So it's really useful to go and take a look at that as well. So drag the triangle onto there to apply that process as well. And what we can do once this is finished is uh, just zoom in and you can kind of see the difference in, in that noise reduction. Wait for that to finish. So if we zoom in, um, so undo and undo, this is no noise reduction applied at all. And this is the luminance noise reduction and then the chrominance noise reduction. As you can see, there's quite a big difference between that sort of red and blue um, noise that's been removed by that multi-scale linear transform. Let's press command and zero, or control and zero to go back to this uh, this image. And the next step after that, we're we're then going to start processing the, the the nebula. And you've got a number of different ways of doing this. You could either um, process the entire uh, background image if if that's the type of target that you have, or there's a lot of nebula detail in there that you want to pull out. Um, in this instance, I'm going to use um, a range selection to only select the areas that really I'm interested in sort of boosting so I can kind of get them to pop out a bit more. So uh, select preview so we can see what, 
what has been selected and then just modify the lower and upper limits to select as much of the, the nebula as possible. Um, this will actually be creating the opposite of the mask that we're actually after um, because the bits in black are the bits where um, the mask is selected. Um, you can also change the, uh, the, the fuzziness and the smoothness to try and get a, a reasonably good uh, sort of gradient or graduation between the selected areas and the unselected areas. Drag the triangle onto that um, image to create that mask and wait for that to be generated. So it's done with range selection, close the preview and then we have the mask. To apply the mask, it's fairly straightforward. You just drag the mask, um, that tab of the mask, onto the grey area beneath the tab of the image itself. Drop that on, and then you can see that um, the mask is applied. So everything that isn't red, um, your changes will be um, effective. Um, so what we have here is kind of the opposite of what we need, as I mentioned before. So if we go up to, uh, up to mask, invert mask, and then you can see that the areas that I wanted to actually change are now visible. You can also press um, Command and K to turn this um, the visibility of this mask on and off. It doesn't change that it's actually applied, it just changes that it's visible because you might find that a bit distracting. So we're going to go to Curves Transformation now, um, and we get this we can now start to manipulate these areas that uh, aren't masked. So select uh, RGBK to, to effectively create sort of a, an S curve. I need to make sure I turn on preview. Um, and then you should be able to see that, uh, that change come into effect. And what I want to do is typical S curve to try and just boost the level of uh, level of contrast in the image. And what I tend to do is just apply this and then just build it up sort of gradually um, sometimes just because I might think oh I'm quite happy with I might have been happy with that modification but actually just seeing if you apply it again does that actually give me a better uh, or a nicer image from my perspective or you could sort of just boost it um, yourself in this curve and do it that way kind of just two different ways of doing the same thing really. So hit apply and I'm happy with that, I might just do a little bit more. It's always that challenge of not not overcooking things and some people are probably watching this thinking yep I don't like what you've done but um, that's the subjective nature of this of this hobby at the end of the day. So kind of happy with that. And what I'm going to do now is actually just hit that uh, reset. But now I'm going to flip the mask so that I can darken down uh, the background areas a bit. So if I just hit invert mask again, um, and now I'm going to be affecting everything that isn't bright red. So if we hit preview again, and then I can just maybe sort of bring the dark area um, of that curve down a bit um, yeah I'm just going to leave it maybe like that it's just kind of go down the extreme and see what happens sometimes it ends up looking horrendous sometimes it looks good um, there is still a lot of HA in this area I think um, just in general so you don't you don't necessarily want to remove it all, it depends on how much you want to create an image that's that's as close to what you could possibly see. Um, but I'm going to keep with that. So hit apply. And we're done with that mask. Uh, the other things that you can do with, um, with curves is also uh, apply um, saturation to the image as well. Um, you can do it with that. You can also apply saturation with um, the, the color saturation tool as well. So this gives you the capability of just um, 
selecting particular colours within your image um, to, to boost the saturation of. Um, there's another area which I think works really, really nicely as well. So um, a guy called or yeah, guy guy called Luke, but his channel's called Luca Matico. Um, one of his subscribers um, sort of gave him access to these um, these masks, and they can be really useful for just selecting certain areas of images to to boost certain colours um, and select those colours over other ones. So in this instance, I'm just going to um, give that a try, try the red mask, um, apply that to the image just by dragging the triangle. And this is just, I say just, this is using pixel math to select all of the red elements of the, uh, of the image to create a mask of that that can then be applied to the image. And then you can start boosting saturation in those areas. So in the same way we did with range selection, uh, drag the mask onto the image itself and then you can see it being applied here um, and then we can apply curves transformation do saturation on the right hand side and just drag that up to a point that we're we're happy with what it looks like kind of okay with that I'm happy with that hit apply um, but yeah it's it's only impacting the the areas that have been selected by the mask is interesting because there's an awful lot of red in this image so uh, yeah so let's get rid of uh, curves transformation and um, we can also remove this mask now I think finally let's get rid of that mask I don't need that anymore say finally there's um, one other thing that I like to do with this and just see whether it works or not and a lot of the time it's just experimental is um, there's a utility script called dark structure enhance just kind of hit that and let that run just accept the default it can boost the contrast in sort of local areas that can kind of really make some of these uh, nebula regions pop so let's wait for that to apply and see what happens So it takes a while. So I uh, don't know if you noticed that, but um, this this area here, the internal dark parts have actually sort of boosted quite a bit. So if I undo that, so that's it before, and that's it after and then over the right hand side um, this is before and then after so it's not quite as impactful here but it, it definitely is there so I'm going to keep that quite like that and say so like the final step for this image is actually now um, bringing the stars back into the image so to do that we use uh, uh, pixel math again if I can find it um, so open it up Let's clear that one down from before so you don't need that and then go into the expression editor and what we all we want to do at the end of the day is is take the background image and add the stars you can also tweak this if you want and you can add a, a, a little bit of extra um, maths into there um, and what we're basically saying is just pull in this to sort of 80% of the intensity so you can yeah just basically sort of um, reduce the stars a bit so they're not quite as intense as they would be otherwise do all of that and then drag that onto the image to apply this and then you'll see the stars appear fairly quickly um, and that's that's the image I think the only other thing that you can do around this and play about with it to see how you feel it works is um, again, still use this star um, field as a mask, and we can again use curves transformation. Um, if we preview this, and then you can select RGB for the intensity, you can kind of just drag this down a bit and see um, whether you like the look in terms of the 
the reduced impact of the stars. So this is it kind of exaggerated. They're a lot more obvious. And then you can just sort of just quieten them down a bit so they don't look so so intense. Uh, so I think kind of okay, yeah, happy with that, maybe a little bit more. Just take the edge off and there's a bit more um people can see really the, the, the nebula a bit more clearly. So apply that and I'd say that will be the end of this uh, this tutorial really. So what we'll do is just remove the mask to see the final image um, and that's what we've uh, ended up with. So uh, if you uh, like this video please hit that like button um, if you have any comments in terms of what I've done how I've done it any questions queries anything like that then uh, write a comment in the uh, in the section below and if you want to see anything else in the future then uh, please hit that subscribe button and the bell so you get uh, notifications for updates uh, thank you very much for watching and clear skies